thought I'd do this a bit differently this morning. I normally pre-record the Daily West Ham. And I thought today I'm, I'm just going to go live because, to be honest with you, pre-recording it actually takes more effort than going live because you've got to do all the editing and all the rest of it. But anyway, uh, so I just thought, let's go live, do something a bit different. Anyway, welcome along. Please um, don't forget to do the usual. Drop a like on the stream because it really does help the channel out tremendously. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. and please make sure you hit that bell icon so that as and when any new content such as this is uploaded to the channel or live streamed, um, you'll be notified straight away. Um, so yesterday, I was sort of buzzing around and doing bits and pieces, as I'm sure all of us were. And this little thing came up on the Pi Capital website. It's a statement regarding the proposed West Ham takeover. <clears throat> and if you sort of like, I mean, it's quite long winded and I dare say probably a lot of you have seen streams already, you know, sort of giving opinions and thoughts and all the rest of it. So I thought I'd just sort of jump in on my take on it. Um, as I say, it, it, it's quite long winded and it goes into a lot of detail about what they wanted to do um, regarding the club. Um, just to sort of like take some little snippets out. Um, the club would own the London Stadium, be part of the group with a joint venture interest across the Olympic Park, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, it goes on about existing shareholders being paid a share price on valuation, um, £150 million cash injection for the club to be used for the development of the training ground, youth academy, so on, so on and so forth. If, if any of you haven't seen it already, you know, just, just Google Pi Capital. You can go to the website and, and have a read of this for yourself. Um, obviously, you know, there's, a, there's, there's some people that seem to be of the opinion that if you were against this takeover from Pi Capital, then by virtue of that fact, you inherently had to be a Golden Sullivan supporter. I never subscribed to that narrative. Um, I, from basically very early on, was was a thanks, but no thanks to Pi Capital straight away. Um, it just seemed to me like it. all they were interested in at the outset when the first bid went in, everything was about stadium, 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 stadium. There was very, very little talk about you know, transfer budgets and all the rest of it, which kind of set some alarm bells ringing for me. I just sort of looked at it and thought, all you're interested in is, is property. The club is just a, a sort of like a vehicle, a means to an end to sort of leverage um, your way into getting the, the sort of like your hands on the property. And very likely once you've done that, you've probably sort of like going to lose interest in, in the club fairly quickly. And for me, that would never do. Now, Obviously, as I say, their statement there says about the ownership of the stadium. Now, I, I have a little bit of a problem with that because, you know, and I think I've said this before, it's, it doesn't matter who you are. You could be you could be Jeff Bezos. You could be Bill Gates. You could be um, Elon Musk, you know, someone that's super, super rich. Um, you cannot just buy that stadium. Legally, you cannot buy that stadium. It's, it's a government asset essentially. Um, if the government were to make the decision to sell that government asset, then by law, it has to go out to tender. And if it goes out to tender, then anyone can bid for it. Um, you might win the bid. You know, it, it may well be that that if, if Pi Capital went down that route, if the takeover was to happen, it may well be that they might win that bid. Who knows? But the fact remains is that it's, it's basically a bit of a bidding war. You know, um, so there's no guarantees that you'd actually get the Olympic Stadium. So that statement I found to be quite erroneous, um, quite disingenuous, to be honest. Um, just didn't make sense. So that, that again, was, was a bit of a red flag for me. You know, you can't just buy the stadium. You, you have to go through the, the proper process, and it may well be at the, the end of it that you're unsuccessful. But... You know, the the other thing that also was a little bit of a, a red flag was that um, I think it was with Hammers News they did an uh, an interview with, which and Gonzo raised this point on one of his where they would ask a direct question because obviously the, the the initial bid was a five hundred million pound bid which was rejected. Um, it was originally said to be four hundred million, but they said no, it was actually five hundred million. Um, that bid was obviously rejected by Mr. Sullivan, which you know he's perfectly entitled to do as the majority shareholder of the club if he doesn't feel that five hundred million pounds is is 
what he considers to be a fair price, then then that's up to him. What the rest of us think is, to be honest, is neither here nor there. But um, Pi Capital were asked a direct question about what does this, you know, what's your transfer budget? Their retort was that it would largely depend upon what the purchase price would be for the club. So it then makes you say, well, hang on a minute. So what what is your pot of money that you're you've got to play with you know because if you're going to have to go in with a bid you've you've just had 500 million pound rejected so let's say for argument's sake your pot of money is 700 million so are you saying that in the, if you've now got to jack your bid up to 600 million you've got 100 million pound to play in or if you've got to jack it up to 650 now you've only got 50 million on transfers or if you've got to go all the way and put your whole 700 million on buying the club are you now telling us that there isn't actually any money for player sales you know not for me not for me um and also the guy at the top Nasib Piriev he's a millionaire well David Sullivan's a billionaire all right not sort of like top end billionaire but he is a billionaire um you know words and pictures you've just jumped in um second offer seems like a retail area outside the stadium yeah yeah, I, like I say, to, to me, words and pictures, I just think it was it was purely a, a property thing. I, I, I don't I, like I, I think the club was purely a vehicle, a little bit of a, a weapon to leverage to get their sort of hands on the stadium, to get their hands on property around the Olympic Park. And it was never about the club to begin with. All this nonsense about this guy, you know, from the back streets of Baku had had posters of Neil or and George Paris and, and other players like that on his bedroom window. I don't buy it. I, I seriously don't buy it. I just think it's, it was, it was a load of old nonsense to try and get people on side. And if he actually was a fan, if he actually knew anything about the club, why on earth did he get Rio Ferdinand involved? I mean, Anton Ferdinand. Yeah, fine. Not a problem, but his brother Rio. Yes. Okay. He came through. He was an Academy graduate. He obviously did well for us. We sold him. We made a good profit on him. And he had went on to have a great career. Fine. But fundamentally, his interests are Manchester United. And you know what? I don't actually have a problem with that. You know, he spent the bulk of his career there. He had pretty much all of his success in terms of medals. He, he got in a Manchester United shirt. So I don't actually have a problem with that so much. My problem was the, obviously, the Twitter thing where it was like, oh, who would you like at Manchester United? And he basically turned around and said that, yeah, Declan Rice, take yourself off to Old Trafford. How on earth, five minutes later, do you expect to be parachuted in as some sort of ambassador for West Ham United when you do, when five minutes ago you were hawking off one of our top talents to a, a rival in the Premier League? Not on, not on. Um, Tony Cotty latterly got involved. Um, I do wonder, um, there, are, there are going to be some people that may well be questioning Tony Cotty. There may be some people. I'm not one of them, by the way, but then I'm aware that obviously see, people see things differently from me. There may be people that look at Tony Cotty in a slightly different light than before when he obviously was, you know, quite independent, quite impartial. And then all of a sudden he's now... He became this um, mouthpiece, this ambassador, if you will, this public face of Pi Capital. They obviously realised that the Rio was, you know, having him on board was a bit of a bad move. So they then get in Tony Cotty, who's obviously, you know, he's a West Ham fan. He's an academy graduate. He, you know, all, it ticks all the boxes, you know, from a, from a PR point of view. So they obviously got him in. And he's obviously, he did a couple of interviews um, he did one with Hammers Chat that I saw. I think he did one with the West Ham way. He did he did a couple of bits and pieces where he said that he'd sat down, he'd had you know a day with the the main man Nassib Piriev, and that you know he he believed in it. Now I I do wonder whether there will be people out there that will think badly of Tony Cotty. Now I don't, I don't. Um, I happen to think that listen, if Tony Cotty thought that this you know, and he presumably knows more about certain things than, than we do. So maybe he's got a little bit of a different perspective on it. If he thought that this was the, the right deal for West Ham at this moment in time, better than what we've got at the minute, then obviously he's backed it. 
obviously it's not come to pass, but I don't think this is my opinion. I don't think that that should be a reflection on Tony Cotty as far as his legacy as a West Ham legend, if I'm being honest. I mean, to me, he's a legend. Um, other people might say he's not quite in that status. That's fine. To me, he's a legend because the very first game that I went to, he scored four goals in, a, in what is our record victory, 10-0 um, against Berry. So to me, he's a legend. Um, whether you think so is, is entirely up to you. But there will be people that will be th saying that Tony Cotty, actually, you've gone down in our estimation there. I, I don't happen to agree with that. He's he's made a decision. He's, you know, he's put, he said it himself, he's put his reputation online. And you know what, you know, for whatever reason, it's obviously the, the horse he's backed hasn't, hasn't romped home in the first place. So that's just, that's life. But, you know, I, I'll give him his due credit. At least he had the guts to get his head above the parapet and and make his point of view known. I'll, I'll give him credit for that. Obviously, Pi Capital has, has bit the dust as far as taking over is concerned, or at least it seems at the minute. They have obviously said that, you know, should the situation change, they may be interested down the track. I personally don't believe it. I personally think this is the last that we will see of Pi Capital. You guys might think differently you might you guys might think that actually pie capital was a, would have would have been a good deal for west ham united and if you do i've you know you've got the live chat although i'll be wrapping this up in the next five minutes or so but you've got a comment section below for anybody that watches it later please let me know your thoughts if you think that pie capital was actually a, a, a good deal for west ham united if you think that pie capital was something that actually this is now a missed opportunity let us know. You've got the comment section there or you've got the live chat. As I say, I'm going to wrap this up in the next couple of minutes, so you better be quick. Um, you know, let us know. But I, I happen to think that that this is this is actually good news for West Ham. Don't get me wrong. Like I say, I, I, I reiterate, please don't anyone come back at me and go, oh, well, Gatesy, you must be a Golden Sullivan supporter. I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't think that Golden Sullivan are equipped in the year 2021, especially post-pandemic and all the rest of it, do I think that they are equipped to run a Premier League club in the way that they said, that they said, no one else, and this is still on the club website, their 10-point pledge, um, do I think that they're, they're equipped to run the club in the way that they said way back then? No, I don't. I don't. I think their race has run. I think, quite frankly, we do need new ownership, but I don't think that this was it. I think this would have been a case of us going from frying pan to fire. That's my opinion. Um, I do happen to think, though, that Golden Sullivan, their their race is in the final straight. I, I don't. I think we're stuck with them until 2023, though. I think we have to prepare ourselves for that. I think 2023 is when they're going to pull the plug and say, yep, that's fine, we're off. And I've already said that because that's when, obviously, the, the thing about the stadium, them not having to sort of pay any sort of penalties as a result of the lease that they signed with LLDC um, is concerned. Um, unless, of course, whoever came in turned around and said, you know, well, how much do you are you going to have to pay as a result? OK, well, we'll we'll, you know, stump that up for you. But unless that happens, I think we're stuck with them until 2023 for better or worse. But let me know what you think, guys. I mean, like I say, I, I think Pi Capital, I'm actually quite glad I, I saw the statement last night that said that their interest was over. And I, was, I breathed a sigh of relief because I just thought that this could have been a really, really bad time. I mean, I, you know, you look at some takeovers, you look at obviously it's worked for Chelsea, it's worked for Manchester City, it's worked by and large for Liverpool, um, teams like that. But, and, and Leicester City as well, Leicester City, obviously a club similar sort of level to us. I would say that that's been a takeover that, that has pretty much worked. But there's also been other takeovers that have been trumpeted and, and lots of things said about we're going to do this for the club. We're going to do that for the club. Um, the, the, the one that I always remember, um, Portsmouth, Alexander Guidemack rocks up at Fratton Park. He's going to build a new stadium. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. They win the FA Cup. Four years later, they're playing in the fourth tier of English football. They've been, they've had a massive financial implosion. It's just been absolute carnage. Leeds United back in the day, you know, they spent money they didn't have. And, and again, they ended up going down to the third tier in English football at their absolute lowest. Um, another one, 
principally um, you look at uh, Blackburn, Blackburn Rovers. I remember the Venkies turning up and the story goes that they turned up and they said they were going to get Ronald, uh, Ronaldinho from uh, Barcelona, who at the time was one of the, the world's top players. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to get Ronaldo in and we've got 10 million quid to do it, including wages. It was just like, you guys haven't got a clue, haven't got a clue how the football industry runs. And now you're running a football club. And they took what was a, a very stable Blackburn Rovers. Um, Sam Allardyce, for all his his faults and for, you know, obviously, you know, what we as West Ham fans think of Sam Allardyce, you know, most of us um isn't particularly uh, complimentary to him. But you've got to say that when he was at Blackburn, Blackburn were, 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 had consolidated themselves as a Premier League club. They were sort of like mid, like mid-range. They were never in any danger really of going down, never going to really challenge for Europe too much. But they were they were stable. They kicked him out. They replaced him with his, his coach, Steve Keane, who didn't know his backside from a hole in the ground, quite frankly. Um, and they were they were down the trapdoor fairly quickly thereafter and haven't been seen in the Premier League since. And that's not what I want for West Ham. I, I you know, when people turn around and say the next level, I want it to be the next level up, not the next level down. Um you know, we, we've had too many times where we've dropped down the trap door and it's getting more and more difficult for teams to, to to sort of like get out of the championship. 46 games. And if you get into the playoffs, it's another three if you go all the way. Really attritional. Um, you don't want, you know, you think you play a lot of games in Premier League football. That would not be a good place to go. So if, if someone's going to replace, and obviously they will, they're not going to be here forever, Golden Sullivan. Um you know, they're, they're both quite old now. So I think that, that their time is running out with all due respect. And I wish them a long and happy and healthy retirement. I, I wish them no will ill, but I just think that they're, they're ill-equipped to run a Premier League football club in 2021 post-COVID in line with what their pledges were, which are still on the club website. They've not been taken down. So if you want to have a look at it, go to the club website, 10-point pledge, it's there. In black and white, they rode a particular horse. It's not come in. I don't think that that should be a reflection on Tony Cotty. I'd like to think that you guys are, are sort of like an, of the same mindset. But again, if if you disagree with me, if you think that actually it has tarnished his reputation, comment section, crack on with that. Um, get stuck in as usual, guys. Please drop a like on the stream. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Make sure you hit that bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when we upload it to the channel. I hope you have a very good Friday. I'm going to finish with my usual sign-off. Come on, you irons.